It's really interesting that in the PISA work, when you look at something about the 2006 science data that's just come out, in the PISA work, what's really interesting is Australian students are amongst the most sensitive in the world to the level of application in their learning. The more application of their learning is part of their lessons, the better the, outcome, the, the performance in, in science. So the more application is in the lesson, the better the performance. And, and Australian kids are the most sensitive to it. So add a, bit of, add a bit of application in other countries and you don't get the big change that you get with Australian kids. I think that's, that's one of the really, I think that's a really interesting piece of uh, uh, data, especially when you compare it to kids around the world. Um, and for me, one of the reasons why I've talked about maths and I've chosen maths as my example is because maths is one is, is the most clear is the clearest in terms of the evidence base for mathematics. The evidence base for the maths curriculum came very strongly from this report. It's a big book called Adding It Up. And in Adding It Up, they talk about five strands of what it is to be a learner. So the whole, so the whole book, the whole weight of evidence behind the Australian curriculum in maths comes back to there are these five strands of what it is to be an effective learner. Reasoning, strate what they call strategic competence, and we've called that in our curriculum problem solving. So that's strategic approach. Conceptual understanding, so understanding. Productive disposition, that was the one that never made it into the curriculum because they couldn't really make, couldn't see how they could make a curriculum that had productive disposition. Productive disposition, your disposition as a learner certainly comes out of you know, how you're taught and the experiences that you have, though, though perhaps not from the curriculum, but we could talk a long time about the dissociation between the curriculum and pedagogy. And then the, uh, the, the, the last strand on the right hand side there is procedural fluency. And what they're talking about there is that maths knowledge and know-how. So, so what we've got is this really strong evidence base that actually marries very well with our values. You know, that problem solving, that application, that communication, you know, the, the reasoning part of it, the being able to, to think the thinking part of it, not just knowing stuff, but actually doing the thinking. That's all in here. Uh, you know, I'll come back to that. I've just, uh, there's another idea that I want to share, but I'll come back to it when we talk uh, a little bit later on. So our values, our values as a group said those things. The evidence behind the Australian curriculum says those things. So where is it in the curriculum? Well, if you look at the maths curriculum, one of the places where we see it in the content is within the, um, the, the proficiencies. The proficiencies in the maths curriculum are it. So the, the, I'm going to call this the essence. We've called this the essence of the subject. The thing that we want our kids to take out of their maths education with them into their lives as four-year-olds, as 10-year-olds, as 14-year-olds, as learners upon which future learning can be built, as effective learners right now and effective learners in the future is in the maths curriculum. It's the proficiencies. And in fact, if you have a look on your tables, there's um, a piece of paper that looks like this that is the maths proficiencies. So can you just gra gra find that? I know you've got lots of stuff on your, on your table. Can you just have a look at that? I've taken the, the these, uh, this is actually word for word what's in the curriculum. This is, this is the curriculum language, not my language. The only thing I've done is split it up into these three sections and I've taken out the math specific language. So if you look at things like at the bottom of understanding, it says interpret subject specific information. Well, I've taken maths out and put subject specific in. So I've just taken out the maths language so we can just think about it more generically and not particularly in maths. So the curriculum actually says to us these are the four things that are the essence, that, co that constitute the essence of being a maths learner. It says to us, for each one, if we work our way down, so it's got the title, and then in the next row it says, and so this is what we're talking about. This is the description of it. And we are developing skills in these things. And then importantly it says, so what does it look like? What does it look like in our classroom when our students are showing these skills, when they are developing this essence. Not just when they're reflecting it to us, but what have we got to do to demand these actions from our kids, to scaffold these actions from our kids, to make sure that they are honouring the strategic intent of the mass curriculum. 
This is a teacher's job and this is a leader's job. It's our job to lead this strategic intent. Otherwise, we're just doing it. We're just going through the motions of the, of the curriculum. This is the way, I think, that we can make the curriculum work for us in Australia, in South Australia, because this alignment between our values, the evidence base that's informing all of the curriculum areas, and the way in which that's reflected in the curriculum, there's a really strong line that runs between those. It's just hard to see sometimes in the curriculum. Um, when I told us before, when we did that perimeter activity, you know, if we look at the at the um, at the, ta the table that I've got on the left hand side, what's called fluency is the knowledge and know how. You know, that's perhaps the maths education that I got. You know, it was knowing stuff and knowing how to do stuff, knowing how to go through the motions of maths, knowing the operations and so on. That's really important. Um, and in that perimeter uh, worksheet that I gave you, we were pretty much only doing that. But when I did the hands thing and I said, you know, here's my hands, what do you think? You all came up with something and you just think about what you thought. And then what I said to you was, prove it. So now we've jumped from fluency straight into reasoning. So if you look down reasoning, the next to last dot point there is to prove or at least provide evidence that something is true or false. We were doing problem solving because we were essentially designing an investigation because I never told you what to do. Um, we're applying existing strategies. So that idea of, you know, being able to measure something by comparison. You took the string and you compared it to the strategies that you had. You were applying to that problem. By changing the nature of the learning activity, what I did was strategically, I shifted you out of the fluency box into all four of those columns. If we go back to Dirk's point about industrial education being about routine skills, curriculum centered, you know, meaning you know, lists of content centered and linear concepts of learning. That's exactly what's going on in that fluency box. But we need it sometimes. Sometimes th that's, that's a crucially important part of our learning. Um, and again, in the leader's resource, there's, the, um, there's uh, resources in there, there's ways in there to see how we can bring out the essence of a subject and to see how that essence of the subject interacts with the content. How now, as leaders, we can say, this is the strategic intent. Now let's see how, what implications that has for the content and the way we think about the content and the way that we teach the content. I want to, there's one other thing that I want to say that's really come out of this work for me. This idea of here having fluency, understanding, problem solving and reasoning. If you've noticed in that, um, in that adding it up paper, they talked about it being five strands, these being four of the five strands. What they didn't say was, it's higher order thinking. What they didn't say was, the fluency, the knowledge and know-how is at the bottom, and then understanding builds on that, and problem solving on top of that, and reasoning on top of that, or any of that stuff. Because that's, that's, that's really limited us. There is no basis, even Bloom stuff, there's no basis for calling them a hierarchy. We might think of them in different ways, but there's absolutely no basis in calling them a hierarchy. Because the, the four, the, these are four strands that come together. It's not one on top of the other. And the danger of putting one on top of the other is that the, that the mindset that we get into and we kind of get pushed into is that our lower performing kids can do fluency and maybe a bit of understanding. And that our next level of kids can move along a little bit more. And our next level of kids can move along a little bit more. And only our good kids can get to the reasoning. That's not true. And so that shift from, um, oh, that shift to a pedagogy for success for all requires us to dismantle that hierarchy and talk about the essence of the subject being for all of our kids. I think as well, you know, we talked about the difference between those activities that we did before. By thinking about these four strands as being accessible to all of our kids, it also creates different opportunities for things like engagement. You know, David Price in this uh, pamphlet that came out last year, reviewing all of that engagement research really, um, came to a position, and it's a similar position that we've come to when we've looked at that research. When we, when we talk about engagement, what do we mean? And he picked out that in the research, almost everybody comes up with three, what, three parts of engagement. They talk about behavioural engagement, emotional engagement in some way, and what we're calling intellectual engagement. 
So there's these three aspects of engagement. And over here on the right-hand side, you can see that he talks about, well, you know, that traditional model of engagement was really just based in behavioural engagement. It was about turning up, sitting down, shutting up, you know, being on task, handing work in, you know, it was all that stuff, which is, which is really just behavioural engagement. You know, once we get into the emotional engagement, some people have called it social engagement as well, being part of a learning community, being engaged, you know, but that, part, that, but that engagement not being enough on its own. Because if we've, if we've got behavioural engagement and we've got emotional engagement and we're not doing intellectual engagement, we're just looking after somebody else's kids. You know, we're not, there's not, there's not, the learning's not going on, that strategic intent of the learning can't be coming through. And so people have talked about engagement as being a three-legged stool in that, you know, the behavioural engagement, the emotional engagement and the intellectual engagement have got to come together. And again, this is another way in which people are thinking about um, getting rid of the hierarchy. You know, this idea that you've got to get the behavioural engagement first. The kids have got to turn up and have got to sit still and shut up and get on with it. And then, you know, we might put an emotional hook in. We might get them to care about, to take personally their education. And then we can do the intellectual engagement. Again, no basis for that at all. But we've got this kind of, this view of this hierarchy. You know, John Hattie's work, I think, is really interesting on things like um, attendance. Forced attendance has got a pretty big negative effect size. Making the kids turn up, one part of the uh, behavioural engagement won't work on its own. It's got to come with emotional engagement and intellectual engagement as well. Okay, I might just pause for a moment because I'm going to be talking for a long time and just give you a couple of minutes at your table. I was going to say some pretty controversial things about blooms and getting rid of the hierarchy and some of those things. I just want to give you a couple of minutes at your tables just to reflect on some of that.